reference group on Facebook. I belong to a photo reference group on Facebook and what, and sometimes people will post requests for things like somebody said, please post a request of, of cute donkeys and cows close up. And I swear to God, it's the best thread I've ever seen in my entire life. I was like, oh, donkey, cow. Oh my God. Somebody posted a pig close up, like somebody posted a goat close up. They're fantastic. So I was so inspired by this pretty little donkey and her baby that I thought, oh, let's, let, let's try that. Anyway, so that's the inspiration for today's class. Also, I wanted to uh, take, I feel like I've been pushing you guys a lot on buildings and structure and let's like take it back to the natural world, physical world and see, or the you know animal world and see what happens. So go ahead, we're gonna start. Jackie, this might be new for you. And I'm sorry, I don't know if you've seen this either. We're gonna start nope, I with something called gesture drawing. So actually here, I'm gonna put myself up in the spotlight. I want you to take a sheet of paper and I want you to just watch what I'm doing. So you can see that I'm looking at you and not at my paper, right? I have a sheet of paper that's off the grid because I don't wanna see it. I am gonna draw Start with a short gesture drawing of this donkey, this picture, and I am not lifting my pencil off the paper and I am not looking at my drawing. Can you see that I'm looking at you and not my drawing? I'm looking at the source, but I'm not looking at my drawing. I can't see it. And I'm not lifting my pencil off the paper. So I'm sketching, this is gonna be a very loose Oops, I just went off the paper. I don't even know like where I am on the paper. Okay, so are you ready to see this masterpiece? Are you ready? Here it is. Here's my little Picasso. Here, I'll take this away so you can see it. Um, here's my little Picasso drawing of this donkey. So the idea is that one of the things that happens when we, so this is a warm up, and I'd like you to try it. I'll just keep mine up here. So I want you to look at your, I want you to keep your pencil on the paper, right? Or pen or whatever it is you're using. I want you to look at your source and try to recreate what you see on the paper without looking at the paper. And, and without, without lifting the pencil? And you without can lift the pencil? The pen, you cannot lift the pencil. So you can see I've got like, here I tried to do the little donkey, then I kind of went off and, you can see there's a line connecting them because I couldn't lift the paper off. I came up here to do the background. This is supposed to be here. Hold on the horse over here. <laughs> like, so I want you to, the first thing we're going to do, it's to get you acquainted with the source. It's to get you paying attention to the source. So I want you to start with that. Start with that. Just do a little one. So we look at the, do not look at your drawing. Do not lift, do not look at your paper at all. Do not lift your pencil and do not worry what this looks like. This is more <laughs> about you getting like acquainted with find your my source. Pen. Use a pen, use a pencil, use anything. Uh I did lift her pencil without thinking. That's all right. Just keep, put it back down and keep going. No, no, I finished, but oh, I'm now looking at the painting and I think I, I, for the eyes, I lifted the pencil without even thinking send, about it. Send a picture. So this okay. is called a blind contour draw. This is called a blind contour draw. It's just a great warm up exercise to get you kind of oriented towards looking at the source. So what a, a big mistake that beginners make is to spend too much time looking at their paper trying to remember what's happening. Um, you can probably remember about this much when you look at it, you know, one little line. Here we are. Um, there you go. Let's see. Oh, I love him. He's cute. Here's mine. <laughs> mine always have this crazy Picasso like look. I'm a scribbler by nature. Good job, Jackie. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> nice V. <laughs> you even did to the background. Just try it. So there's no like, this is to get us oriented towards, oriented towards our working with our source more than working, working with our paper. And of course now, uh, now I'll have you, we're gonna grid this. So when you're done, 
go ahead or do it again. It's also really fun to do this with your left hand. <laughs> it's like, all right. So I'm going to grid, I'm going to grid using a ruler and a marker, this, um, this source. You guys are going to grid your uh, paper using a pencil, right? Because uh, so you're going to grid your blank, blank paper. Everybody's got a ruler, I assume. Um, and the you're gonna the size you're gonna work if you're gridding is gonna be eight and a half by eleven inches, or uh, what is it? Twenty one and a half by twenty eight centimeters. So block that if you're using a nine by twelve. If you're using nine by twelve paper. You can you can grid that. This should still work pretty well. But you, if it's any bigger than that, absolutely not. You want to give yourself if you want the grid to work. You want this to be the same size as this. So I'm going to start with, oh, that's what it is. I what size are you painting? Did you say, sorry, not painting. Drawing? Uh, yes. Eight, eight and a half by 11. Okay. Yeah, A3 paper, A3 printer paper is the size. A4. Uh, A4. A4 printer paper. Right. All right. So I'm finding, if you notice here, I'm lining up my ruler at the bottom and I'm finding the halfway point, which is, this is eight and a half, so it's. 4.25 here, finding the halfway point here, and then finding the halfway point up here. So I have to be careful, I line my ruler up, and, and I notice this ruler has oil paint on it, which is what I did to my mm -hmm. thing yesterday. So let's see, let me get a ruler that does not have oil paint on it. It's rain, guys. I'm sorry. Oh my god, this has oil paint on it too. Oh, all my rulers have been adulterated with red oil paint. Yesterday I had to totally start over on a watercolor painting because I got oil paint on my drawing. Okay, let's see what else is. Where is that red paint coming from? Let me figure that out. But in the meantime, here we go. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. So I know that when I draw line the ruler up or the straight edge, if you're you're using a tiny ruler. Right, you're gonna do. Oh, that thing is drawing out. Let me get that out of the way. Find a marker that's working. I might actually try doing this in charcoal. Let's see if that works better. Yeah, there we go. Right now, I know that this paper is decided, exa dis, uh, divided exactly in half. I'm going to come to the other edge too, which is either uh, uh, 11 inches or um, 14. Uh, sorry, 28 centimeters. And five. So if it's inches, the halfway point is. Oh, is that right? Yep, sure is. 5.5. Sometimes you'll look at it and be like, is that really right? But it totally is. Just right here. All my rulers suffer from paint. <laughs> I use them to paint a lot, you know, to like work on my painting. So, so now I can't read the numbers anymore. All right. So here your painting is divided in half. And then you're going to divide each half in half. So half of 4.25. Is um, two point two. Yeah. One more. Ah uh, no, this is not three. Not three. Two point six. And then I'm gonna come up here, find those same measurements here. You, of course, are working with a pencil because you want to be able to get rid of these lines later when you need them, when you need to. Oh, that's not right. I'm not looking at the right. That was right. Okay. And 
Although we are not going to work on the grid forever because we can't grid things in real life. And, and I'm going to make you learn how to, you know, measure proportions, make you. I'm going to bring you in the direction of learning to measure proportions. It is the quickest kind of dirtiest way to figure out where am I off, right? Half of uh, five and a half is 2.5 really hard to read that on this ruler. Maybe I can do, yeah. I'm switching over to centimeters, which is a totally valid thing to do. Often it's easier to read centimeters. Half of 14 is, you know, seven of 28 is 14, and half of 14 is seven. Yeah, every single one of my rulers is so covered with paint that I can't read most of the, can't read most of the numbers. Maybe I also need my fly circles. I don't know. Is that right? Yeah. So that we wind up, of course, with these equally equal sized rectangles splitting up our thing. Hey. And once you've given yourself this, I'll catch up with you by gritting my own paper with a pencil. Once you've done this, your first lines, once again, are going to be the outer shapes. So none of the inner shapes. You're going to be so surprised at how long this dude's nose is. It's really long. I mean, I know donkey ears are, are long. So notice, I kind of didn't finish the nose on this side of the face because the legs are here. And then, here is baby, little baby. Are you doing this, Sandra? Yes, but without a grid and on watercolor paper. Excellent, on small I was gonna paper. say, I have a lighter version of the source for color, so I'll send it uh, So, really? Okay, I've got it. Ah, that's cute, Osiris, I like it. Um, yeah, I've got the, I've got here, I've got it. I just, did I just send it over? Let's see. I just did a lighter version. I'll pull it up in just a second. Thank so you, you guys are gonna start by drawing and using the grid to help you figure out where things are. Um, hold on here, where are you? Oh, right, I sent it across this morning. I lightened it a little bit, Sandra, so that you can see more. You'll see. I know. I'll send this one across with red so you have the color version. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't see it. Hold on. It's coming. Okay. I have to pull it off. What? I'm oh, just, right, right, right. I'm such a Gen Xer. I don't do these things fast. <laughs> oh, Cyrus, your guy looks like he has cute little Thank glasses. Thank you. On. I love him. It's really cute. <coughs> Excuse me. So I will catch up while you guys are getting here. But go ahead and send across. Oh, here, I'll send a picture of this so that you can see. Oh, no, that's not right. It's funny. I'm like kind of bounded by my new camera, which is so big. It's hard to work around sometimes. There we go. No. All right. I will get all of this light. There. 
Okay, got it. So there you go. So now you can see this. I mean, you have it here, of course, but it's like even easier to see. Thank you. On the source. Yeah, so really focus on getting this out, these outer shape, this outer shape right. And I'll jump in and demonstrate for you. I'll put the grid on because I have we have a lot of grid drawers today, just so you can. I would normally freehand it too, but um, freehand meaning I'm kind of using one area. I'm sort of establishing one area as uh, my as my sort of point to decide. Right, I decide the top and the bottom of him, and then and then I I stop, once I establish this vertical distance, I can use various elements to see, okay, is, it, is he one, two, three, four? Interesting. He's like, if you, go, if you create a top and a bottom and then you measure one quarter of the way up, right? His white, the white of his nose stops at one quarter. The next quarter up is like kind of right between his eyes. The third quarter is uh, to the top of his head. And the fourth quarter is really technically just below the tips of his ears. So he's basically one, you could divide that line up into four quarters um, and, and then just use that to sketch. Maybe I should do that since I've already just described it as a process. Here, give me a sec. Let's see. Okay, I'm looking right now, Jackie. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, one. Uh, you're, you you'll see that the note. Uh, pull this out a little bit further. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? That's his four legs. So there needs to be room for his four legs. Oh, okay. Here yeah, yeah, here. yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So yep. I will actually model this for you, how this works. Um, drawing by, uh, drawing by like assessing. Cause I think you guys, it's good for you to use the, the grid. Um, okay. So you see, I've just established my vertical distance kind of where I think the top of his ears are and generally where the bottom of his nose is. And then if I draw a line straight down the middle and I divide this into one, two, three, four, four equal quarters, quarter one, <laughs> quarter one, if I'm going for the bottom is here, quarter two here, quarter three here, and quarter four is like right here. So just below the tip of his ears. So you see how I can kind of guess where things are based on these lines, right? I don't necessarily need so now that, so here, I'll give you the second set of lines. We'll do those in green. All right. Jackie, you're gonna immediately see you need to make the eyes a little bigger. Right, there's that. And then his little legs come like this. And then down here, it's a little bit hard to see. So here's the relationship of the head to the body. Just the basic outer shapes. Notice that when you start to focus on detail, particularly too early, you'll tend. Here I am doing this with this little guy here. Notice that you'll tend um, to make things too big, right? Whatever you're working on, it's real easy to make things too big. I do it all the time. All right, let's see if I can do this now. I'm still going to try. Okay. 
breath here. So I'm working without the grid, but I do have these quarters that are helping me kind of see where things start and end. And notice how much erasing I'm doing. Lots and lots of erasing. So this is not something, erasing is not something you ever really stop doing. You just become more acclimated to the idea that you've got to do it. Okay, the other thing I can do is to help me is to figure out, like, if I'm trying to figure out how where to put this, how wide his, it is between his eyes, I know that this line here, right, comes here, and I can check. I can check it against this quarter. Believe it or not, this quarter is about the same distance as the distance right. I knew I had to bring that in. So now I know. See how wide I had made that originally? I even made it too big on this side. Hmm. I heard a hmm there. Yeah, it's, you know, a perspective of a little guy. Yeah, he's very... It reminds uh, me of that um, reindeer we did. It's oh amazing yeah, how little space shortened. it takes. Yeah, but so is this guy. Look at this. This is his four legs right here. But he's you can so tell him because he's like straight on. Right. It's, it's like a big rectangle. But for one on the left, you can see a bit more of him. And yet... He hardly takes up any space. He hardly takes up any space. Yeah. I find myself saying that all the time. That, wow, that was smaller than I thought. I if realized. we hadn't done that reindeer, I would have been in trouble with this. Hey, that means it works. Practice. <laughs> right. And also, I think our practice with building perspective is helpful, too, because it helps you kind of understand how tweaked things are when they go back into space. Right. We understand that. One, two. I just remember at Reindeer, we did like a small rectangle and it had to fit in there. <laughs> and I took like the outer edges of this little <laughs> guy and it had to fit in there. But look, um, at, this is a classic example. I totally made, because I wasn't measuring enough, I totally made his nose holes too big, right? I'm checking here and I can see that not only is this a quarter, that halfway down is where the nose holes start. So I have to find the halfway point here. So I'm going to send you where I'm not to you. Okay, let me see. Okay, so let's so, see there's some dots for measuring. Let's see. Sorry, taking a second. Yeah, send it, send it. And here, I'm sending mine across as I'm starting to work on it. You guys go ahead and send me your drawings as they're as they as you're finishing the stages and let me know when you're ready. Okay. Yeah, this Sandra is way too wide. Actually, you're the you're You mean between the eyes? Yeah, way too wide. Uh, uh I've um, I have a marked where the eyes are. 
No, nope. I've marked uh, where the eyes start and finish, is... but I haven't drawn them yet. Oh, okay. All right. So you just want me to look at the little guy because these. Well, uh, are... yeah, only the shape of a big guy. I haven't done any face okay, features. Okay, so yet. the shape of the big guy is definitely off. Let me show you a couple of things. So number one, what I'm seeing is so this is way too narrow. Um, number one, let's see. So I measured one, everything. With oh yeah, no, no, yep, yeah, way too. Okay, so watch this. This line right. from here to here, right? If you were right. to measure this line from here to here, this is a quarter of the way up. This is a quarter of the so way up. So you did it in quarters, but what I figured is that the ear from the very top to the very bottom, and it attaches below the top of the head, mm -hmm. um, is one and is if you take that if you take that measurement from the top of the head, it's exactly yeah. where the white starts. Um, so yes. measure the ear. So that's why we did it. The, but I don't think you have the ear in the right place. So remeasure that again. That what what I can it clear. So what I see here, when I'm looking at this, and I'm looking at this and trying to show you. So here is your. I don't. I see your first. Is this? So here's where the first dot is. Right. You have that here. And then you have his nose all the way. Oh, the dot here. is. Uh, yeah. Is I don't know what the dot is there, but the oh, white okay. is where that line is. Which line? This line? That line? Yeah, now I've gotten metal. It's, yes. it's not in the right place. That line okay. is not in the right place. So this is what I'm saying. You need to draw a line from the top to the bottom, from his nose to the top between the ears. And you will see, and then if you divide that line into quarters, you will see that this is halfway. Because you didn't have the ears in the right place, so you use that measurement Right, the problem can the ears not be in the right place? They aren't, trust me. Look, you'll see. The ears start three quarters up. One, two, three. The ears start here. Wow, well, okay. That's how the ears can be in the wrong place. So that's the that's where you came off. So that's the beginning. And then he's much narrower here than he should be. So start by locating these four quarters. You're like, here's where the white. Halfway is where his eyes are. The top, uh, third, three okay. quarters is where the top it. of his head, right? Then that's going to help. Once you establish those, then you can use those to measure other things. Thank but if you. you get the ears in too quick, you it's easy to get them in the wrong place. I started with the ears. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and then measured the everything from there. That's the problem. That's the problem. It's not the most reliable measure. Okay, let's see. B. I'm looking here. That's correct. Um, this is a little bit too far out, B. You'll see that this is actually at the halfway point. Can you see that line? You have the body out too far. And so it comes more. So what you've done is kind of more of this extended. It's it's a, it's less dramatic, that curve. Right. It's yeah, I put it out too far. Yeah, you put it out too far. So you need yeah, to bring yeah. it in and you'll see it kind of straightens a little bit more. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, so now you can start once you guys get these shapes in. Right. So here is the a really key thing to look at when you're starting to shape those of you using the grid is to really look at here, I'm gonna show this to you, is to really look at the relationship, the negative spaces between things. So if you can see the negative shape that kind of comes here, that's gonna help you. And same down here, see that? That's gonna help you get that shape of that nose, right? I'll take a closer picture so you can really see. Uh, yeah, Jackie, it's starting to come along. So now I want you to get some of those Let's see. I feel like he's leaning too much. Yeah. Ah, yeah, he's a little bit too, this shape is a little bit too wide. Uh huh. So you need to angle it in a little bit more. It's more like an angle, more than a curve. Oh, yeah. See it? I know, hard to see, right? Unless you it know. is. Yeah. See that? Yeah. That will help you get the shape on that side. Mm -hmm. Look at the look at how I drew in. Here, I'm gonna send this to you so you guys can see it. Look how I drew in the negative space shapes by the nose. 
there are these orange ones here, here and here. This is gonna help you shape the nose, right? Against the grid line on this side. Even I'm, and if it makes you feel better, even I'm like having to. Sort of redo this as I go along. And if you'll notice, I don't know if you guys can see here, but my original nose lines were way up here. Just easy to make things too big. Okay, here, hold on. Yep. So as you start to kind of sketch in, right, and now, of course, once you're here, we're going to start dealing with value, right? So we're, we're marking out the light and the dark shapes. The eyes are, oh, I can see it. Yeah, the eyes are like kind of these dark liquid, they're definitely not just, they're not like really um, like human eye shaped. They're not really almond eyed shaped. Even human eyes aren't really almond eyed shaped, but you know what I mean. They're bigger, there's these kind of dark edges. There's a, a light area kind of around that comes in. So see, Jack, you kind of put those eyes in before you were ready to really see what they were doing. Honestly, drawing is just seriously the, wow, I thought it was here and it's really over there. <laughs> That's really what it is. That's all it is from any moment. I can see I have this too wide. So Beatrice, if it makes you feel better, I made the same mistake. I mean, I didn't have my grid to follow, but I, I also made this side too big. It's easy to do it. I'm not even getting to the little guy yet. I'm just kind of focusing on the big guy here. I'm looking at the negative space between these two ears, making sure I have that shape right. And now I'm dealing with value. So once I get some of these bigger shapes in, Uh, not bad, Lana. I'm just looking at your one, two, three. Lana, your white area here comes up a little too high. It's really down a little bit lower. It's really just one quarter of the way up the entire face. So if you measure it here, you'll see I'm going one up. Oh, yep, too high. Yep. So bring that down a little bit, which means your eyes will come down a little bit too. <laughs> Sorry, I, I should get to the little donkey too. I'll get that here while I'm thinking about it. But I can see little donkey kind of starts here, comes over, comes down. Once I establish Big Donkey, I can kind of use Big Donkey to help me figure out where Little Donkey is. How big Little Donkey. Little Donkey doesn't come up that high. I'll get to about here. So I know if I line up here, if I come over here, I can see that 
little donkey's ear, the top of his ear lines up at the middle of the eye. I can kind of come over and put that here. Right, as I start to put, oh, I'm really using my outside shapes and my negative shapes to get in those back shapes. Yeah, because of the perspective. Absolutely, Samantha. Perspective is just a whole thing. You know, we have to remember that things, because we're translating three dimensions um, to two, that there are some changes in the way those things need to be portrayed, right? We don't have three dimensions. We've only got two. So if that's the case, I look at this and I decide how wide it is. Bam. One, two. Yeah, good. Yeah, I just don't think I, I certainly couldn't do this. I couldn't take a I couldn't draw with a um, meeting going on. I just couldn't. I mean, not, you know, to produce something that's finished. I could maybe doodle, but maybe painting is easier. Nah. I mean, like, like I mean, in watercolor once you've already done the maybe. The drawing. I think it just depends on the person and I think it depends on what you're doing. I generally find I need to have a pretty quiet, um, I don't know, I, I like to listen to, uh, I can listen to music or I can listen to an audio book, listen to a lot of audio books. Um, and, if, and notice, by the way, guys, I'm now coming kind of back to the darkest areas, the darkest shapes. as I'm filling this in. Notice that the nose isn't dark all the way through. It gets a little lighter as you come to the, the nostril that's closer to the edge of the nose. And now I see the problem. Okay. Yeah. Notice I've put, I've had to correct virtually every, because I'm not using a grid, I've had to correct virtually every line I've put in. That's okay. Notice that these, there's these kind of white shapes around the outer edge of the nostril that really help shape the nose. Make sure you don't have this in too far. Kind of really create that heart shape. It's almost a heart shape. And then I'm gonna lightly, if you remember, uh, as we start to kind of shade in these animals, our outer shapes, we're going to the darkest areas first. I did that here, right? Kind of darkened these here. I am, I am looking at values. So if value is the lightness or darkness of any color. I'm sorry, I know I'm repeating myself for some of you, but I think I can never repeat myself too much. Um, one is just white and five is really dark. Two, three, and four are varying shades of gray that just get darker and darker. Right? That get gradually darker. 
So the one and the five are your darks and your lights. And two, three, and four are what we call midtones, which is exactly what it sounds like. They're middle tones, right? They're somewhere between dark and light. So I like to get my darks and lights in and then add my middle tones and then kind of nuance my middle tones from there. So I'm adding in kind of a general middle tone. Right. And then I'm kind of coming in. I can see in some places it's darker, like kind of right here. There's this kind of darker shape of the fur. I might darken a little bit. I might get this even darker. I can see that kind of over here, there are patches of dark within my middle tone. So you can see how I'm starting to kind of fill in. If you kind of notice it, you can see that this area, here, whoops, I can't really do that. Um, let's try this one. You can see that it's really kind of darker in the middle tone here, and then it gets lighter until here, right? You can see that sort of shift that's happening. So you can kind of darken everything, a lot of things. A little bit darker. It's kind of a little bit darker on the side here. I know it now it becomes a little hard to see after this. So we might have to go back to the original sketch, which I sent, which I sent out before I started drawing on it. This is kind of a lighter. Everything back here is a little bit lighter. So I'm starting out with a lighter coat. So see how I'm kind of starting by shading in base colors, and then I'm looking at where a lighter edge meets a darker edge. And I'm creating a little bit more texture and tone here. If you can see where one edge meets, a lighter edge meets a darker edge, you want to kind of increase the contrast there. So see, I'm going back in and increasing this, and I can see there's these light areas around the eyes. So I'm pushing to make sure those are visible, which means I might spend a little bit more time kind of darkening around the light edge with a medium tone. See how like those, so these, as you start to do that, these details start to come out. Uh, the baby has pretty clear light and dark marks, which is kind of nice. So there's this shape here between his legs. Can't really see what's happening. This is kind of a medium tone. This is a little bit darker. His head's pretty dark in a lot of places. And then You see how already this baby kind of looks like it's coming out? I'm going to take a picture of this, send it across. This isn't done yet. But this is how you start to deal with light and dark. Mm -hmm. I don't have very much detail on here. This is already looking pretty good, right, in terms of the detail. Um, let's see here. Another. Yeah. So just let me know if you have questions, you guys keep working. Mostly it's about not getting too much into detail before you have basic structure. I can see I messed up this. I should have paid more attention to my ear shapes, which are a little bit different. Here, there's a very distinct kind of light and dark shift.
definitely darker here and kind of lighter here. So when I go in and do the detail, I'm going to pay attention to this, this shift. So I'm looking at how, is this a kind of ragged edge where this dark area meets this lighter area, right? Like what's happening here? I'm not getting a lot of detail in. I'm kind of creating a raggedy, furry edge. Where the lighter area meets the darker area. So instead of having to like draw every piece of fur, I'm kind of paying attention to the pieces of fur where there's a shift between two different mediums or a dark and a medium or a medium and a light or a dark and a light, right? That's, it's called working the edges. And that's really what starts to make something look more realistic here. I think I show you this here. I thought that's a word you didn't use, Lee. What's that? I thought that's a word you didn't use. Which one is that? Realistic. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure, right? Um, what I would say is, yeah, I mean, but we're all kind of striving for realism a little bit, right? Oh, good. I, I agree. I totally we're agree. All trying to I mean, I'm teaching realism. Uh, our abstract teacher is not teaching realism, but... That's what I'm always teaching. But I think realism scares people, right? The word, like it's impossible. So I try to couch it with things that are less threatening. <laughs> if that makes sense. You can also see that his head kind of comes in here and covers the body. So as I start to kind of get more detail into the body, like. Like he's got this little cap on his head. So see how I pulled this line out here to make sure that his whole head really is the focus here. And his body is kind of back here starting just above his eye on the left. I personally am finding it really hard to see, so I'll probably wait to do that finishing work and film. Just a minute, you guys. I'll be right back. Thank you. 
Did you guys feel that? I just gave you a blessing. <laughs> you just what? Out. I just gave you a blessing. No. <laughs> every morning in my studio for the last five years, literally every morning, uh, I burn an, a dried herb and I say a blessing to everybody who enters my uh, studio physically or digitally. So oh, I forgot nice. to do it this morning and you were busy. So I'm like, let me do it right now. So I just bless you all. You get a Thank big, you. fat, long blessing. Um, let's see. And never oh, get nice, too many Cyrus. <coughs> Wonderful, Osiris. Great. <coughs> Proportions are perfect. <coughs> I shouldn't use the P word. I know everybody doesn't like that, but um, perfect. It's a perfect. Proportions are perfect. It's wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, Beatrice, looking nice, looking nice. So Beatrix, look at the bigger shapes of the eyes in the face. Okay, look at these bigger shapes. Um, I'm gonna, here, I'm gonna take a picture up close so you can really see. It's a little hard to see, I know. Can you see that they take up a little bit more space, the darks? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so pull those out more yeah. you'll be really happy with the way that works and then with this little guy you don't uh his we need to re here's my suggestion my suggestion is to turn this drawing upside down in fact i can do it if you guys are ready i'm gonna do it okay turn your drawing upside down everybody turn your drawing upside down unless it bothers you then you don't have to turn your drawing upside down but if you turn your drawing upside down you will be able to see the shapes a lot more clearly. So Beatrix, when you're done with the eyes here, take a look at the shape of his face in relation to the back of his body. You'll be able to see that better. Okay, Trust me, even though like, it's so funny when I teach kids, I have them do this and they're all like, no. <laughs> they just tell me no. <laughs> and then I'm like, just try it. And then after a while they're like, wow, this is great. And I'm like, yes, it is great. <laughs> But at first, I love it. They're all just like, no way. That's just too weird. But you'll find that turning something upside down, like, um, look at how it, how it really hyper-focuses you on the lights and the darks. Can you see that? It's just like your, your left brain stops trying to, do what's happening is your left brain is dominating the conversation. Your verbal conceptual brain is trying to tell you what's happening and it's not correct, yep. right? And it's all because the left brain is used to being in the driver's seat, it's always on. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for some reason, flipping the picture upside down will often flip the left brain like off. It just because the left brain's like, don't know what's going on, just shutting up. And then like all of a sudden you're left with your right brain evaluating shapes. It's kind of amazing. After a while, you learn to tell your bre your left brain to shut up. <laughs> and it's funny. I once I had a psychiatrist for a client for a really long time. He's a drawing client, and he came to me fairly late as a drawer. Um, and you know, spent any late, you mean he was old? Oh, when I met him, he was old, <laughs> yeah. Is that what you mean? Yeah. But he came, yeah. Late? yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, yeah, that's what I mean. He was probably, it's funny, he's so vain, he'll never admit his age to me, but he was probably 70 when I met him. That was like seven years ago, so he's got to be in his late 70s now. Um, but uh, he anyway, so he started drawing at 70, and he was he sees 30 clients a week right therapist he sees he's a therapist he sees 30 clients a week a psychiatrist and i had told him that psychiatry is an incredibly left brain field he said really and i said yes because you're trying to put words on something you're trying to explain something in words right what is happening to people 
And, and, and then I gave him this exercise to do where you actually we will do it next time at beginning drawing. You have to draw your hand without looking at your hand. And he said he tried to do a drawing exercise before going into a psychiatric session with a client. And he said it was awful. He was like, you're right, you're right. They can't, <laughs> like you can't, you can't do it. He said he found it really hard to talk and he couldn't like, he was very confusing for him because the right brain is, uh, after a while, your right and your left brain will work in tandem. They'll actually work together. So there won't be this dissonance, but it's, you'll need to know how to separate the two pieces. And at the beginning, the left brain gets very confused by right brain analytical problems. Oh yeah, there we go. I'll be honest with you guys, it still feels like magic to me. I'm still like, I every painting I'm like, I paint and I'm like, Oh, all of a sudden, I'm like, I put one brush stroke in and it's there. Like and It's like, amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm sometimes it, just one thing. It's I watch videos thing. and sometimes I get bored and I kind of go fast forward and suddenly it looks completely different. Like, oh, let me what go back and see where that changed. What and it's just I like miss? one thing. It's almost always one thing. So you start with these kind of dis right? These disparate shapes. And then you just have faith that they will come together as you start to add more detail, working the edges between darks and lights. Yeah, and it's always the one thing. And uh, we call that in painting terms, we call that when does the image lock in? When does it lock in? When does your eye start to see it for what it is? And that lock in is totally exciting. Sometimes it comes very early in the painting. Uh, more often it'll come kind of mid or late. And yeah, I still get a kick out of it every time. I'm like, wow, I wonder how this is actually going to turn out, <laughs> right? Like, how is this going to turn out? Um, there's a secret part of me that's like, I don't really know. <laughs> I'm going to do this process and I'm going to put it together. And it's there's a kind of delight in the reveal, right, of when this happens. Uh, I, By the way, I feel like there's a couple of things I can see much clearer when it's upside down. One of them is that I can see the division between the face and the body. So that's happening. That's why Carl goes, it's up and it's up and it's <laughs> Yeah, 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 it's hard, right? It's like hard. So here, let me show you. This is, um, here is like the side of the face. So this is the nose sticking out. This is the side of the face. And then here is the body. Right, the body is on this side. Is that shape? That's ah, still really hard to see. Um, hold on, let me try this. Yeah, 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 yeah. This Maybe the color version is easier to see. I think it'll be harder actually. Let me. Because I can see something. Yeah. Anyway, you can see it. It's this kind of dark. This little shape is the side of the face. This shape is the front of the face. This shape is the side of the face. So I can come over here and work. I can come over here and kind of work. It's a little bit darker here. See this side, this really now helps me kind of emphasize my eyes. And then here I can start to, and it's a little bit lighter on the side of the body than it is on the face. The face is like coming towards you, right? So I can start to, and on this side it's here. This is the side of the face, right? So there's the side, there's the front, and then there's this side. It's like a cube. There we are. Uh, let me get a little closer, even closer. Come here. 
Yep, there, there you go. Now you can really see it. The left side I did in blue, the right side I did in pencil, sorry. The right side I did in blue, the left side I did in pencil. You will also find, like, you'll probably find, like I do, that like it gets harder to speak correctly. <laughs> Your fucking right brain, you stop being able to find words. So that's what I was conveying about my psychiatry client, uh, Bob, is that he was like, oh my God, you're right. I have to be able to speak and evaluate things. And that's valuable for the work that he's doing, right? But right brain was kind of interfering with that process in the moment. Um, however, he did say that he had a client, so he really specializes in clients. This is also quite fascinating. He specializes in clients that really want to get better. So they'll meet, he, if he has a high anxiety client, that client will meet with him three times a week because they're committed to not, right? Once a week, you can kind of bullshit your psychiatrist, but you really can't bullshit your psych. I'm serious, it's like, yep. <laughs> you really can't bullshit your psychiatrist if you meet them like three times a week. So he had a client that was incredibly anxious, highly, highly anxious. And before his session, he would have her do uh, uh, spend five minutes doing a blind contour gesture of her hand. So she would put her hand on her knee, on her lap, and then she'd um, look at it. She'd look at the hand and, and, you know, with her right hand and her paper far away in a notebook, she would try to sketch her hand without seeing it. So he said that they observed that for a year, if she did this before a session, she was less anxious. She was more likely to be able to see, pull back and see her anxiety jumping in, right? And, and so she was able, so for her doing a right brain exercise really helped focus her so that she could be clear. For him, it was kind of hard because he had to con maintain control of the session, right? So he, he had to have a little bit more control, but for her, it was letting go of control that helped her in her diagnosis. And it worked for about a year until it got too easy for her. Then once that assignment got too easy for her, it, she stopped paying attention to it, focusing like you all are now. And she began to, um, it, be, she be, it began to lose its impact on her. So the, the goal here is that this hard work that you're doing right now, where you're really intensely, right? Looking at it, th this is, at the end of this session, you should feel a little bit more focused. A little bit less anxious. A little bit less anxious, or at least a little bit more able to see, like remove, which is interesting, right? That tells you that it's like meditation. Like meditation removes you supposedly from your thought stream, your normal left brain thought stream that's always going in your head, our heads, right? Like all of our heads, we have this narrative constantly going telling us what's going on. And it's not always right. <laughs> I'm a chanter. I've been, I've been chanting. I'm a Buddhist. I've been chanting 40 years now. No, no, yeah. 30. And when I first started chanting, like, oh, 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 oh. And then, <laughs> all the time, I calmed down. I grew up, calmed down some, didn't get rid of it, and then got diagnosed years later with stuff. But because I reacted to the test differently than most of the other vets did, right? They called the doctors in and said, "We want you to meet this woman. She's a vegetarian. She's a chanter, and all this." And the and my and it and really my register my register my frequency like what they test you on. Yeah, it's way off the charts compared to the other veterans that don't meditate or don't chant. So Interesting. they incorporated meditation and yoga into the VA health wellness program now. Oh, so yeah. It's such a big difference in. It's the, so huge. And that balance, it's really important because it pulls you. And this is meditation, too. You know, for some reason, this is reminding me of my favorite acupuncturist in Portland is a guy who um, learned acupuncture from the Black Panthers. Like he actually, and the Black Panthers did it in the 60s, in the 70s, 
in the 60s and the 70s, the Black Panthers would do acupuncture on the streets for drug addicted people. Like, so they would go and literally they would do act needles in people like on this to cure their addiction because they were just like, we are gonna take care of our people and they're not coming to a clinic, right? They're not doing, so that's how John learned his acupuncture. <laughs> with these and I thought it was genius I'm like why do we not know more about this Black Panthers doing acupuncture on on drug addicts on the street to help them right like it's a very interesting like boom like whatever it is like therapy you can do on the streets it's like it's it's true whatever kind of can stop you stop that stream right we all have a vision of our reality and we all have that reality has limits to what we think is possible. So always we're limiting ourselves by our thought process. Uh, so if you can stop the thought process long enough and then do something, achieve something that you didn't think you could do, which I think is very great about a drawing class like this, right? Then you're able to like, uh, that shifts your thought process. It shifts how you think about it. You perceive yourself, your world, your blah, blah, blah. Like all of those things. It's very interesting. Um, it changed my life, which is why I'm kind of so religious about it and really want people who are working, you know, to have it because I feel like. Sorry, what changed your life, Leah? The cube function? Drawing, drawing, oh. drawing art did. It changed my life. It made me a different person. But I believe. Yeah, it made me an absolutely different person. Um, I couldn't believe I could do it. And as I said, I still, there's still a part of me that's like, wow, I've been doing this 20 years. I still can't believe I can do it. <laughs> yeah, I still can. I'm still like, I can do this. This is amazing. <laughs> but it started with the miracle of shifting my perception. What I thought was happening was not really happening. That translated over to a lot of different things. I don't know, Sandra, if you have noticed that happening as you get more into art, do you find it shifts your perception? You mean of everything? Oh, anything. Well, everything or any other thing. I think you look at things with different eyes. Um, I think I'm still blown away that I can do what I can do. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, it's yeah. still very much hope I can get better still. Um, but mostly, yeah, it's... It makes you so much more relaxed and you get into another zone and it makes you forget about everyday worries. Um, it probably helped you when you were going through your treatments. Oh, completely, completely, particularly, uh, you know, you, they give you a lot of steroids to mitigate. Um, um, yeah, keep, and it prevents you from sleeping. I mean, it prevents you from throwing up, which is great. But mm -hmm. look at all the parents have done to their kids. My mother used to hit up, what are you doing over there writing and drawing? What are you doing? Go in there and get a book and read. That's, yeah. I can hear my mother saying, stop doodling. What are you doing? Put that <laughs> on down and go in there and get a book and get something to make some sense. Look at the damage they've done. And if that's exactly what we should have been doing with doodling. And so, yes, many sleepless nights. I just watched painting videos and it made a huge difference. It just yeah. took me away, just um, it made a huge difference. I bet it did. It does. It's like it really- It gave me something to obsess about, something to really look forward to. And, yeah. It, helps, very it is it. obsessive. It is an obsessive. <laughs> it's, it becomes an obsession. It does. You have to, it requires obsession. <laughs> It kind of feeds itself, yeah. It um, does. It requires you to be obsessed. <laughs> but I can't think of anything better except perhaps exercise, and I wouldn't say that's better, just as good. Yeah, but, yeah. Dip different, yeah. So, Leo, I'm just going to show you this so you don't make me redo it. Okay. Because I just I just want to paint it. Let me see. I hope it looks good. If I send it to you in detail, you're going to make me redo it, but I don't want to redo it. I just want to paint. I'm happy. I'm happy. Do it. Okay, do good. It. Do it. Uh, hold on here. Let me put this back up. Sorry, water. guys. Sorry, I meant to add the spotlight and instead I...
Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever used those things? They're like uh, water brushes. Um, are they like a pen water brush? I think you put water in it and then use it like a brush for watercolor. Uh, I have not. I have a friend who loves those things. They're like watercolor pens is what they call, well, brush pens is what they call them, right? They've got like a little water in them and then you can... Yes, what, what the a brush they call yep, it. Yep. Water, water she, brush. My, my studio mate, Melissa, loves those. I have not yet ever managed to make them work, but she loves them. I have one that came with a set and I haven't tried it yet. I have I'm a just, feeling you'll really I, like it, Sandra. I maybe, think it'll be an addition. Maybe I'll try. I think right. um, it's for, for pe people people who go on location, you know, it's very useful. You don't have to carry a water bucket. Um, uh, uh, Cyrus, that's really beautiful. That's super beautiful. Those are lovely. I love the colors. I love the warm oranges on the bottom. Oh, lovely. Okay, feels good. Uh, there's a new class on Tuesday evenings at 6.30 your time. It's an abstract painting, mixed media painting class. Uh, and uh, you guys, of course, are welcome to jump in if you want to. It's pretty great. We're having a really great time. Yeah, those are beautiful, Osiris. They're just wonderful. Really gorgeous. Who's squawking? That's like, um, which one is it? It's either a blue jay or a cat bird. Oh, I bet you're right. It's, it's a, a Washington bird. bird anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's the cat bird. He's very nice. I can't really see the little guy over there. And then there's a little bitty guy from the back. The yeah, there's a teeny tiny. I oh, wonder yeah. if anybody was going to notice that. He's not, a, <laughs> he's not, he's bigger than, he's bigger than the little guy anyway. He is bigger than But he's right. far away. But he's so far away. Yes, exactly. Um, here, hold on. I'll take a picture of it close up so you guys can see and send it across the thread. What's up? Here we are. Here, whoops, sorry. Come on, here. Here is the little guy uh, up close so you can see him a little bit better. There you go, Jackie. So now, Jackie, notice that, like, the, there's darks here, but notice that this is still darker, right? Yep. Right, so start filling in those areas. This is looking great though. With Ready, a please? 2B or an HB? 2B. Maybe a 3B. Okay. Well, for the darkest areas, you might wanna use 3B, maybe an HB or a 2B for the lighter areas. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Cyrus, yeah. Yeah, yeah, looking great. I love the texture. Are you using charcoal? No. Yes, wonderful. I'm going to move you guys to charcoal. Oh, by the way, I have a charcoal drawing kit that is available, which includes char all charcoal and ink supplies that I require for classes. And I'd like to start teaching those. So I'm going to drop the link. It's, it's uh, for US residents. It is 47 bucks to get everything, all drawing and paint, all, all charcoal drawing and ink drawing supplies, including paper, brushes, uh, erasers, like all the different things. So let me drop that in here. Let me find that link. It's only available for a short period of time. And it's an amazing, uh, it's amazingly good supply, supply list for these, price for these things. Um, it's here, I'll drop it in the chat section. I got my favorite supply uh, art store, art supply store to agree to provide it. Yeah. There it is. It's just a special kit for my students. 47 bucks includes shipping and everything. 
and you should get it because in probably in July, maybe in August, I'm going to start demoing in charcoal. And mm -hmm. then in Octo September and October, I'm going to start demoing in ink. So if you want to follow along, you'll want these materials. You, of course, are always welcome to just work with whatever materials you have. I get it. But uh, this is a great opportunity to get those materials. Everything that I use is right there. Boy, we had fun with that uh, uh, subject yesterday, Sandra, right? I was really. I don't remember what it was yesterday. We didn't oh, you do were this. working on your dog, but it was but, the it was the arches but, in the villa. Ah, that's right. That's right. I always did that. I thought it they came out really well. They all of really them. did, and kind um, of they look lovely. Um, Natalia's just blew my mind. Did you remember that one? I'm thinking about sending it across this thread so you guys can see it. No, just, let me see. Here, hold on. I'll send it. She's it's very just, talented. And this particular, she has a tendency to go a little bit too mushy, but this, it really worked in her favor here. So here, let me show you. Oh, that's coming, Beatrix, it's coming. Yep, sure is. Absolutely. Oh, wonderful. Here it Still is. some people, I don't know who they are. It just shows us phone numbers and I try to add them as contacts, but because I don't have, have them as contacts. I don't know who they are. Yeah, I don't know who they are. Um, so this is Natalia's, look at that one. Oops, wait, I forwarded it to the wrong, here, I'll forward it to Saturday. Look at this. I just think this one turned out really well. Oh, it looks gorgeous. Right, because her softness, she kind of managed to control her softness just enough oh. to let those mushy parts. I love the stocking on the leg. Yeah, she nailed it. I mean, just sometimes Natalia's, yes, yes. Oh. Who did that one? That is so cute. Uh, there's a woman uh, in in Poland, one of our um, Reuters Poland organizers, Natalia Oriol, who, who is- She's just, an organizer. Yeah, yeah. She's a peer mentor. That's how we started working together, but she loves the classes. So she organizes Europe, basically, gets the word out. I love her style, how she she's very bold with colors but kind of soft in her application right like there's a softness to all of the things that she does and sometimes it it, it works against her but other times this time it really nailed it i feel like this time it really it really worked Also, how long, how much time do you guys think has passed? Don't look at your watch, don't cheat. It looked a while ago, a little while ago. I was worried. I guess everyone is too absorbed here. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> it's been it's been 90 minutes, a little bit more, 95 minutes. We've got like half an hour left. Does it seem like that much time has gone by? No. It goes fast. It goes fast. Yeah, Lana, that turned out well. You did great on that one. Yeah, Lana. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, Lana's on the call today, so I'll show you what Londa did yesterday. She did awesome too. That was Lana's effort from yesterday. Turned out really good. I like it seeing it. It's very beautiful. I know. It's... Lana, we've come a long way, haven't we? <laughs> 
I become quite the painter. I really, it gives me great delight. Because I feel like some people um, really, really, I, well, all of us, but I think there's some people in particular, but a lot of us really want to be able to do this. We want to be able to render on a two-dimensional cert, right? We want to be able to draw realistically. It's, it's like wanting to know how to write or wanting to know how to read. We have a desire to do it. And our brain is frustrated when we don't. I, I think that's, that's the big thing is we have a little sadness in us, everybody does, because you think you can't. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's right. It's good to have the, the right uh, motivation. Well, this is a little bit of a landscape, Lana. There's a little bit of trees and <laughs> a little horse in the background and grass. <laughs> I think these pens, they have a nice point, but it's, Not I think it probably it takes a while to control the over water, you know? Yeah, there you go. But Melissa swears by them. She's always think, trying to. You just need to get used to them, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, she's just always trying to do that. Oh, Diane. Oh, did you see this? Look at this. I feel like this should be painted. Let's see. Diane. Uh, Diana. Yeah. So, uh, Diana, the director of the press club, had this sort of tragedy happen where her dog, her, her beloved German Shepherd, had to be put down very quickly. Oh. Like two, within two hours, she found out her dog was really sick and had to be put down. Okay. And then she just adopted this crazy puppy she calls Sunny last like a couple days ago and that's them <laughs> that's a great shot yeah. Sunny's so going to school yeah so what's, right. the, so what's the thing that you'd like to show up where you're looking yeah that's what she said it was cute she was like giggling she's giggling like a little school girl Every time she's on class, like she's giggling and happy, and she was so. I mean, it's not like she's not sad, but like, yeah, uh, anyway, there's nothing that helps more than just getting another picture. This right. puppy is nut bar. <laughs> it's like she's adorable, it just but you know, like any puppy, just absolutely nut bar. No. I think that that one has to be painted. I might have to do it. Where we'll is see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see what time I can scrape out for it because that's a really great shot. No. Uh, Jackie, uh, Osiris, Beatrix, do you guys have any uh, pets wandering around in the background? I think Osiris, you have dogs, right? I have one dog and fish. One dog. I'm a fish mom and a dog. A mom. fish mom and a dog mom. And what about Jackie and B? We have cats. <laughs> oh, yes. B, hey, come here. Me. I have no pets, sadly. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm not allowed <laughs> in my apartment. Oh, that's no, so sad. Tough. Well, see, now you can just enjoy ours. <laughs> <laughs> They all take now. Now you want a donkey, though, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I left have a goat. Wow, I drew the donkey. Well, we'd be happy to meet anyone.
So Jackie, there wasn't anything that was any good. You didn't get one good pitch out of the out of the bunch. I mean, there were a couple of picture books that were okay, but the same woman has this crazy, really badly done detective, like urban fantasy detective novel that just doesn't hang together. So it would be one of those things like you'd have to work with her. Yeah, and picture books are really, really hard to sell. So, you know, what are the chances? And then you're stuck with this other piece that I wouldn't That's know really what bad. to do. <laughs> Did you tell her that in nice yeah. words? Yeah, I, I mean, I yes, yeah. I feel like that's a good, that's good feedback to hear, right? Oh, I mean, I always say it's anything I say is subjective to me, you know, and other people right. look at it differently. So it may just mean I'm not getting your work and I'm not the right person. Right. But I do like to sort of give some feedback about where the market is going and sort of what may be the limitations of a particular concept in the current market. That is, that's interesting. Because the thing is, it's like drawing. I want people to write. I want people to express themselves, but not everything you write necessarily needs to be submitted. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> like It's just practice. You know, my one of my favourite books is The um, the War of Art. Have you read it? Have you read yes, it by yes. Stephen Pressfield? Yeah. And uh, I listen to, I have it in audible form and there's a great narrator with it. And I listen to it over and over again. And one of the messages of that book is... Uh, and a lot of it applies to painting, but although he is a writer, Stephen Pressfield, um, yeah. you know, is like, don't get too hung up on a thing. Like you fit, like he talks about how he finishes his first novel and he he's in a trailer park, like living next door to another guy who's a pretty well-known writer. And he goes, I finished my novel. And the guy's like, great. When are you starting your next one? Like, yeah. you know, and he has it right. Like he wrote, I don't know, many stinkers before he he hit upon the legend of bagger vance which actually became quite a hit uh and he does a lot his his success has been with a lot of like taking greek history and modern modernizing it and that you know like entails like that but like he had a lot of stinkers and you know you don't get too caught up it, it's about like continuing to push to get better all the time right yeah. like yeah yeah Great, you finished your first novel. When's your when are you starting your next one? <laughs> I mean, so many novelists don't like reading their published work because they've improved since they're even their right. first. <laughs> and it, it just it's painful to read the thing that they published because it's not what they would write now. Right. <laughs> totally. That's funny. One of my favorite uh, sort of um, genre writers is a guy named Neil Stevenson. And his first book, Snow Crash, is like actually one of my favorite books of all time. But I can actually see that it's not as well written. It's not as well written as his other books. It was his first book, but it's a great book. It's like kind of has an energy that's like really charming. But I can imagine when I read it, and I've read it many times because I like it. I like it. It's written well enough, but definitely he got to be a much more smooth and polished writers in his latest books, but they don't stick with me the way Snow Crash does. There's some kind of like thing that confluence, right, comes together where you, yeah, you learn to write by writing. <laughs> you know, I remember Snow Crash too. And I think one thing about it, it was like before its time, it was just very, the it concept was. was very unusual. It was. And I've always wondered, why don't they make it into a movie? Because it's a great, and I feel like 
like his his view of the world so his main hero is named is half japanese and half black and his name is hero protagonist h-i-r-o yeah. <laughs> hero protagonist and he lives in a storage locker and there are no longer countries in the world it's all like fast food franchises he lives in Uncle Enzo's pizza delivery empire in a storage locker. <laughs> like somehow I'm like, I could totally see it's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> the whole concept is really brilliant. Um, yeah. Yeah. It had something, but it was a little rough, right? When you yeah. read it, you're like, you can, it's a little overwritten. There's, you, you can see there's like points where like he didn't quite, it's definitely not his best written book, but it sticks with me more than anything else. You yeah. know, Cryptonomicon, like uh, Foucault's Pendulum, any all of those others don't like stick with me the way, the way that that one does, because it's it's just so funny. It's just so what a, it's just a, it's his first good. It's his first idea. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we've got about 10 minutes left. So spend another five working, make a decision. What can I do and to bring this forward? And then send me a pic, send us a picture over so everyone can see where you're at.
All right. Finish up what you've got and send me a picture across the thread. Let's see where you're at. It's okay if you're not happy with it. That's not the point. The point is often about overdoing it or underdoing it or not being totally pleased. It's a good, um, this is a good lesson. I'm gonna pull this off. I'm gonna remove the spotlight. Put you all in gallery view. And wonderful Beatrix. Ha, I love it. All right, so tell me, uh, B, what is one thing that you learned uh, that you think you did well, and one thing that you think you could work on? Um, what do you think you did well? Did well, I think turning it upside down did help me see the shapes better. So mm -hmm. I think like I corrected pretty well when yes. I messed up. That's a great, um, great, great thing to do well, correcting. Better than getting it right the first time is correcting. That's the best skill you can get. Okay. Um, but I still have a lot of trouble getting the shape, shapes right. Like, I don't know. Um, so you can work on that? Yeah. Okay, you could work on that. That's something that we work on as you do it more. What is this, your second lesson? Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing how your bar rises about what you're expect. Like, but the beginning of the lesson, you're just like, you would be totally happy to be able to do this. At the end, you're like, oh, come on, I could do better than this, yeah. right? So it's a funny thing. It's like drawing is one of those things where you leap so much that you forgot where you were. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I'd never drawn anything two weeks ago. So. Right? So, like, pretty damn good. Yeah, but working on shapes, that's great. Uh, Jackie, great. What about you? I love his nose. I really love how you got the bottom of the nose, all those details in, right? What do you think you did well? Well, what I was going to say is I really liked the nose. <laughs> yeah, I love the nose. You got I, it. I was obsessed with the nose. Um, but I think shapes and shading would be, and I find animals hard. I really do find animals hard. Right, right. Okay. Well, that's because there's a lot of fur and like transitions. So we can spend a little bit more time working on that in the next few weeks just to practice. And I'll work more on that technique, on technique with that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Osiris, oh my God, it's wonderful. Osiris, what do you think you did well here? <laughs> it's great. Um. When I first started, because of my how my mind zone, mm -hmm. I I could not understand anything you were talking. Mm -hmm. But now that I've been practicing, even if I don't, I'm late to class. I still try to practice. Mm -hmm. um, I feel that I've learned more about shading and more about um, how to see something from the inside of yourself versus trying to see it from the outside. It's really, your, your, your mark making is beautiful. Thank you. What do you I'm think you can work on? What do you think uh, you can work on? Uh, everything. <laughs> right? <laughs> Spoken like a true artist. <laughs> work on everything. That's what I want to work on. I don't think you ever get to a point where you can't work on anything. It's always right. Work. Sandra, can we see where you're at, or are you at a couple? Oh, I'll show it to you like this. Okay, because I know when you're finished. Here, hold on. Uh, I'm going to spotlight that so everybody can see it. Oh, yeah, it's wonderful. He's really, coming I along. didn't think so, but I'm still. So, um, so there's one thing that I always, always, always do wrong, and that is that the first layer is supposed to be like uniform, and then you do the hair marks. Right. But I always like to do the hair marks. It's from a start. Yeah, it's, it looks it's weird. because you it's because you like to focus on the, it's the details. Yes. It's the detail. Because thing. that's what I do with pastels. Right, right, right. And so that's what I do. But you can't really do that with paint because paint needs some smooth areas and then it works the better if you have on smooth top. areas. And I know it and somehow <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> I just so that's totally what I get. I get it. I get it. It's a habit, right? And we like to focus in on that detail and it can become, right? Like, like I want to draw every, the thing with fur is you can't draw every Love hair. Love her texture. Yeah, but you can't um, draw so every I, hair, but your instinct is to want to draw every no, hair. No, I don't draw every hair, but <laughs> I yours. like to show that it's 
hair texture and yeah it didn't start like that and yeah I yeah know yeah that. yeah yeah but that's i guess what i mean is i don't say mean you i mean the universe of you one one likes to no, no, no but I, i've gone away from that but it's okay to show fair texture but not as the first first wash um but anyway i'm still working on it awesome uh lana that's wonderful can you tell us what you think you did well today what are you happy with and can you tell us or do you ha not have if you don't have if you don't have um voice just type it into whatsapp all right you guys uh this was great so yeah i would highly recommend yeah i agree with you i was happy with those two um I'm happy with your donkey drawing. I think you did really well. I think everybody got it. I think everybody got the donkey. Like there's not one drawing that does not look like this donkey and its baby. So the question is just Actually, kind of working the details. My baby looks like a cow. <laughs> I think um, well, probably it's not long enough. To, His little nose know. might not be. Yeah. All right, so we'll we'll work on this for a while. We'll stay with animals for a while just yes, to please. work on it. Uh, in the meantime, if you want more practice during the week, you can go to the YouTube channel and pick up the videos. There are a, a beginning drawing. I've recorded every class on beginning drawings from the beginning. So you could start there in January. So you could start yeah. there and go forward. Um, what is the name of the YouTube channel? Art of Fun? I've, no, I've sent it out a uh, hundred times, but I'll find it again and I'll send it out the link. I'll send um, it out the link. I'll send once, it out. One of the things you can do is uh, you, well, once on YouTube, yeah. you can subscribe and it will, oh, it'll let with you a know. bell and okay, with a little so bell on. and it will tell you every time there's a new video. Let me pull it up and I will send you guys the link. Name of it is now subscribing and on the. I mean, it's called the Roaming Studio. Uh, it's it's called the Roaming Studio Art Channel, but it's just got a funky. I can get. It. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'm getting it right now. Art. It's. Uh, let's I'm see. Like, Here it is. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Now I'm gonna grab it. Explore. How do I grab the? I'm on your uh, ID. I'm, I know your ID. Yeah. Um. It is. Oh, God damn it! How come I'm not? I can't. Uh, Leah Kohlenberg, subscribing right now. No, that's not the one. Uh, I have several YouTube channels. Here, hang on. I'm going to find it. And one, so, that one has got a color thing on it, like a colored uh, image. Like a blue, a little blue image. That's the, the one. Other is, uh, the other is black and white. Which one? The one that's blue? Yeah, with the color. Yeah, do you want the blue one? But let me get it since I'm here. Let me here. Hold on. I'm going to pull it out just so I can find it. I don't like I purposely it doesn't have a special name. Uh, hold on here. I'll get it. I'll send it to you. But it's also on the um, the art at work portal. Uh, uh, which uh, Diana sent the information of which Diana sends out each week. So let me but because I'm here, I'm going to get it anyway. I'm going to grab it. It's called the Roaming Studio Art Class Video Channel. And it is here on Zoom. I'll send it in the chat. So you got it here. And I'll send it across the thread. So here it is in the chat. Go ahead and grab it. And then I will see you guys next week or whenever I see you again. Great work today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye. Uh, bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Stay yeah. safe. Bye, everybody. Wonderful work. Wonderful. Absolutely <laughs> wonderful.